Welcome back. This is Biology Chapter 3, Section 1. What is ecology? I just want to make a couple quick reminders. Make sure that you're reading your textbook along with these video lectures. And the video lectures are just uh, presenting important key concepts and, and information on that chapter and section. But you should always read your textbook to gather more details and things that I just don't have time in these short video clips to uh, talk about. So make sure you're reading your text. I do test the exams are both on these video lectures and also uh, your actual textbook. So today we're going to talk about what is ecology. And so this picture that we see right here is uh, a beautiful picture that has a lot of uh, complexities in it. And ecology is actually one of the more complex scientific disciplines and uh, it's because it has so many different interacting components that are very difficult to study and measure and so it's the complexities are, are um, quite unbelievable. So if you look at this picture you know, there's a ton of things taking place here both living and non-living. So you have non-living things such as this pond or, or small alpine lake you have non-living things such as the air, non-living things such as the snow and ice, the rocks, uh, the soil. These are all non-living things. But in this picture, you have uh, many, many uh, living things, the different types of trees, uh, different types of grasses and flowering plants. You have organisms that live within the lake, within the soil, and uh, that roam around uh, on the soil. And so the complexities, all these things interact in many different ways. And so the complexities are immense. This picture right here is just to show you uh, one interaction like this, uh, where you have a golden eagle. Golden eagles are quite large. And we do have them in Southern California, although not many anymore. A golden eagle uh, attacking this fox and, and ultimately killing this fox and uh, this is just one interaction within an ecosystem. However, it's uh, quite complex because this fox also interacts with uh, maybe rabbits or other organisms that it may feed on. And then those rabbits uh, may interact uh, with the uh, grasses and tiny plants that live on the land. And then those plants also change the chemistry of the soil and the air. So uh, one interaction is much more complex than uh, it may seem. It's not as simple as just golden eagle eating fox. It has wide range implications. And so one thing that we talked about in uh, last chapter was a big idea in biology is this interdependence. So we are dependent on nature. Uh, human beings are dependent on nature and nature is interdependent on each and every species uh, and their surroundings. And so ecology, the goal of uh, ecology is sort of to quantify this, uh, these interactions. And so ecology is a scientific study of interactions among organisms and between organisms and then their environment or surroundings. And so we're talking about uh, living things and also non-living things. And we're going to quantify this using the scientific method in ecology. The biosphere contains all portions of the planet. And so this is the broadest, uh, more, most inclusive uh, scale or level of organization that we talk about is the biosphere. Again, bio means life and sphere, well, it's just a geometric uh, shape. And so uh, we're, biosphere is earth and it's going to include living things include, and as well land, water, and the atmosphere. And so biosphere includes all of these things. And it extends about eight kilometers, depending on where you are on earth, if you're at the equator, it's a thicker atmosphere, and if you're at the poles, it's much thinner or uh, doesn't extend as far up. So eight kilometers above the Earth's surface to as far as 11 kilometers below the surface of the ocean. So that's everything we talk about when we talk about the biosphere. And so 
uh, when we talk about the biosphere, we're going to be talking about this web of interdependence. So interactions in the biosphere produce this web of interdependence between organisms and then uh, organisms and their, the environment in which they live. And there's many different types of environments or surroundings, different conditions, weather patterns, vegetation uh, cover, etc. And so uh, this interdependence is always changing. Right? The, the, the biosphere is constantly changing. It's dynamic. And this is because of this interdependence and this uh, interaction between organisms and living things. And so it's constantly changing uh, and uh, shifting. And we'll talk more about this later. Levels of organization. So we talked about levels of organization in biology last chapter. But this one we're going to specifically talk about uh, how it relates to uh, the study of ecosystems um, and, and living things and non-living things. And so uh, we want to understand as ecologists or biologists, scientists, we want to understand the relationships uh, within the biosphere. Uh, it's important that we understand these relationships so we can understand the health of our planet. Uh, is it stressed out? Uh, do we need to be doing something differently as humans? Uh, that sort of thing. And so ecologists are going to ask questions, right? That's the first step to the scientific method about events um, and organisms that range in complexity from a single individual to the entire biosphere. Okay, so ecologists have a big task at hand and it's quite complex. And so the levels of organization we'll talk about are actually on the next slide. So here we see all the different levels of organization that ecologists can study. An ecologist can study the individual level, just one individual species, right? Or it can in, uh, involve uh, a population of a species. So talking about um, many of the same species within a defined area. Or uh, ecologists can uh, ask questions about a community. So uh, all the living things within a, a defined area. Or it may talk about an ecosystem. And once we get to the ecosystem level, now we're talking about non-living things such as water and air and soil uh, and including all the populations of living things. And when we get to a biome, we're talking about many ecosystems making up a larger region that are similar in dominant communities. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And then uh, we can also extend and ask questions about the biosphere as a whole. So a species is a group of organisms so similar to one another that they can breed and produce fertile offspring. So a liger is not a new species. So when you take a tiger and a lion and mix them together, they don't produce fertile offspring. So although it does produce offspring, they're not fertile. And so therefore a liger is not a species. Populations are a group of individuals that belong to the same species and they live in the same area. And so you define the area, whatever it may be, city of orange, and then there's a population of squirrels in the city of Orange or, um, you know, red tail hawks within that defined area. Communities are going to be uh, many different populations that live together within that area. An ecosystem is going to be the collection of all those population of organisms. Uh, it's going to be a defined area, a particular place, and they're going to live uh, together and interact with non-living and their phys physical environment. So ecosystem is now talking about living and non-living things interacting at a much larger scale. A biome is going to be a group of these ecosystems and they may have the same climate or similar climate and similar dominant communities. Oftentimes when we look at a biome, we're going to be looking at uh, the vegetation. So what type of vegetation is dominant in that community? That's the easiest one to define is uh, what type of plant life or vegetation is there. And then the highest level is biosphere. And biosphere uh, ecologists are going to be looking at things like uh, global warming, um, ozone layer, uh, bigger, broader picture things uh, that are, are changing within our, our planet. 
So at the end of some of these, when I have time, I'm going to give you some questions. I'm just going to flash through them real quickly, and that will be the end of the section. Uh, just you can, I recommend that you read and try to answer these questions, and uh, you write them down and, and use them as a reference uh, for studying for the test. I sort of sift through these real quickly. You can pause it to write them down and write down the answer as well. So that's the end of the section. Uh, congratulations and uh, make sure again that you are taking notes and those notes will be due here depending on the day. It will either be due for your class Monday or Tuesday of this week.